Hello, everybody. Welcome back to American Truck Simulator today. We're driving a very special truck here. This is the Oshkosh Defense H-E-M-T-T-A-4. It is a military truck. We're in Grand Canyon and we're going to uh, Gallup at the rail export. There should be a fun drop. Uh, we got an order of M1097 Avengers and uh, there's some Humvees over here on the right. We're going to pick up. This thing has a 800 horsepower GMC engine in it. I'm going to fire it up for you. It's got a unique sound to it. There we go. Ready to rock and roll. All right, we'll push in the parking brake, and we'll go ahead and get this bad boy rolling down the road here. It's got uh, a very interesting set of axles in the front of it. It is a unique truck. You can see they're turning there in that left mirror. Very cool. All right, we're picking up over here on the left. If we have enough room for this thing, that is. Uh, it is compatible with the SISL add-ons, so that's why we can turn these lights off. We don't need those on. Um, that is the reason why we have a GPS there, which is really cool. All right, let's see if we can pick up here with these fisheye lenses. Let's kind of get behind this trailer here. I don't have the advanced coupling on because I'm not sure if it works or not. I assume it possibly does, but that's all right. We're just looking back there. We're good on that side too. Yep. It's a long way back with these. I can tell you that. There we go. Go ahead and attach the trailer. Pull that parking brake. And there we are. Look at that thing. This is what I'm talking about. Look at the uh, dual axles on the front very cool we got brake lights awesome we got turn signals we're ready for our trip all right parking brake is in and uh, we're ready to get out of grand canyon village here with these and i'm gonna swing out wide so we don't smash into the thing that's next to us there that would be ideal all right it's got a special uh transmission in it too uh, there was an option for an Eaton Fuller, but I went with the one that uh, didn't make any sense to me. So I was like, I've never heard of that one before. That's got to be the one that comes with this. And so we did. All right, making a right turn out of here. We don't need to accept any job offers. Thank you very much. We just got to watch out for cars. We're going to make sure we're clear of that, which we are. This thing has such a cool sound to it, man. We're clear of that. Awesome. A very long truck, that is for certain. How's everybody doing? Doing good? All right, we'll make a right turn up here. Actually, we can downshift here. It does have a uh, decent uh, jake brake in it. I'll let you hear it here in a little bit. All right, making a right turn here. Hope your week's off to a great start. It's been a while since we've been in America Trucks. I mean, I saw this thing uh, came out and I was like, well, we got to drive this thing. We have to. All right, getting some speed going now. Some people said that uh, you need to watch uh, the differential lock on this one, but I haven't had any issues with it yet. And I wouldn't want to have my differential lock going uh, this far down the road as it is anyway. Beautiful day here in the desert. In fact, I'm gonna get a screenshot when we get on this blacktop road here. All right, we're back in action. Man, don't need to have the windows down in this thing, do we? Not at all. Listen to that engine. And we're in our final gear there. I'll let you listen to the uh, Jake brake here. Pretty slick. Pretty slick indeed. All right. Well, we're going down the road now. There's the classic drink, drive, and lose. I saw that uh, SCS is going to be updating Las Vegas. And um, before I even saw it, I was like, man, I hope they add some new, uh, some new road systems in Las Vegas. I think that's the biggest issue I have with Las Vegas is the fact that you have no big 
uh, arteries that you can go through there. You know, you always have to get off on the side streets and it takes forever to do that. So they're going to be revamping it and they are doing exactly that. They're going to be adding some new highway systems in there so we can actually get through without having to, you know, go all the way uh, through downtown Las Vegas every time we're transitioning through the city. So that's off to SES for that one, man. I think that's going to be an excellent addition. And uh, I do some long haul drives and that'll do it. That'll help us out a lot. Man, this thing is so much fun to drive. I can't explain it. It's just fun to drive. There we go. You can get it on the usual mod sites. Just always be careful, you know. If you just search... Uh, I, get, I got this on ATSmods.com, actually. But you really got to be careful there, because if you're going to get a virus, sometimes it feels like you're going to get it from that website. But I assure you that's not the case. That is not the case today. We're going to be watching ourselves here. Into these windy roads. It's a noisy engine, man. Even at uh, 1,600 RPM, there's 1,700 already in our range for our uh, shift there. Floating the gears. And when I'm all done with this run, since it's a shorter run, I will actually take you uh, into the garage with this thing and show you what additions uh, there are for it and the options. And then we can really own in on what engine and transmission I'm using. I know some of you guys uh, are military guys and you would definitely know this truck. Always want to say thank you guys uh, for your service when uh, you're out there doing it. Even if uh, you know you're a veteran, the same goes to you. And maybe this will bring back some uh, memories if you had to, to drive one of these or you've been around them. They're a pretty uh, unique truck. Coconino. Welcome, everybody, to Coconino. Slow down for this corner here. It's the, it seems like it might roll on you pretty easy from what I can tell. When I'm at these higher speeds, you'll notice we have kilometers an hour not miles per hour there. And it's 55 through here, so we can really get it up to like 80 something here. Oh, it looks like it might rain on us. It's not supposed to, but it might. It just might. Well, a lot of you guys enjoyed Lumberjack's Dynasty, so I think I'm going to make that into a mini series on the channel. Um, I've been enjoying it. It's funny that it's got a, uh, you know, a storyline to it. And I know that, you know, it's based like, I think it's the same people who make uh, Farmer's Dynasty. It would make sense since the names, you know. Uh, but I didn't have any interest in that. In Farming Simulator 2, the thing that draws me in about uh, Lumberjack's Dynasty is the fact that it's literally, uh, it's got a storyline to it. It, has, it gives you some, a reason to work on that house and all that stuff. So I think that's pretty darn cool. All right, we're gonna be coming through Flagstaff, it looks like. I'm gonna move my uh, track IR over so I don't have to look left so much. There we go. Entering Flagstaff. Hello, Flagstaff. Good afternoon to you. Uh, not stopping the motel. We're just passing through the area here. We are. Okay. Slow down there. We got a red light up here. That's fine with me. I'll um, switch to the outside view so we can have a look at this bad boy as we make our turn. All right. We got the green. We got a yield, of course. But look at the absolute behemoth this thing is. That is so cool. Make our turn here. Nice. Nobody's coming from that way. That's good. Don't want to run into any cars either. Oh, it's such a cool truck, man. Next gear there. It just sounds like you're, uh, it just sounds like you're in such a 
high RPM, but you're really not. It reminds me of like a Detroit engine. Two stroke. Yep, left turn here at the stop sign. But I wanted to show you that anyway. All right, left turn at the stop. So, uh, some updates. I know a lot of you guys have been wanting me to do a house tour. I have one more room to finish before that happens. Uh, and that is the little mini bar I'm building in a bonus room we've got. Uh, and then apart from that, I don't know how long we're going to stay in this house, to be honest with you. Uh, we've been talking about possibly buying a home uh, here in the Tampa area. We're not sure where yet, but we're just kind of looking in the greater Tampa area. We're pretty excited about it, you know, to to make Florida our home and not have to be hopping around so much. And it's way cheaper to, you know, obviously get a mortgage, but you have to find where you want to live first. And I think we have done that. Ooh, man, wrong, missed shift that one big time. That's okay. That's all right. Right turn on Verdest. Got this little road signs here. I've noticed that before in this area. Right around the curb. Yep. That wasn't bad at all. So now we go straight and we're getting on 40, I believe. That's what it looks like to me. Looks like a train's coming through the area. <laughs> we got a cop there. I used that uh, municipality. Municipality. It's an Amtrak uh, one, so you get all those different police departments. And so I'll show you this, and then, you know, it's been a while, so I'll show you my mods I'm using as well, if you'd like to see how I have them ordered and how everything's working. I did put Jazzy Cat's painted truck traffic back in, uh, so we have some decent-looking trucks out there on the road. That was something I definitely uh, wanted to do. And I think we'll try the uh, AI traffic mod again before too long. Just wanted to make sure I, you know, everything was working with this one first. That's how I tend to do it. I tend to uh, do the whole, you know, one at a time routine rather than doing multiple ones. We're good there. Nice. Uh, yep, we're getting on 40. Eastbound. Take the left turn. We will take the left turn. Thank you. In the bottom there, you can see the little readout on what gear we're in and stuff. That's pretty darn cool. Ooh, that was like a great downshift there. I love it. Whenever you, you're floating gears and you hit those downshifts, man, that is so nice. I'm taking the advice that I've been getting from a lot of you guys that drive trucks in real life, and you're, you told me, you know, 1700 is a sweet spot on a lot of transmissions. All right, trying to get on the highway here in one piece. Not, okay, yep. Let, let us on, please. Thank you. Good Lord, man. Now we're going to see what this thing's like on the highway. Listen to that. We don't have the windows rolled down either, by the way. There's the final gear there. It does have an 18 speed in it. There we go, eight high. That was eight low to eight high there. So here we are now about 100 kilometers an hour. If we hit our display, we can see just how fast we're going. We're doing 64, so we're actually going way under the speed limit, but honestly, I don't think we need to be going that fast in one of these Oshkoshes. I don't think we do at all. But let's see what 75 is like in it. Uh, we're at 74, so 75 about right there. Yep. Okay. Interesting. I'm going to back it down, though. We'll just flow with traffic. How about that? We'll go a little slower than them. And that'll work out for everybody involved. Got some touchy steering on it, man. 
I'm getting used to that. You have a lot of different wheel options. I'll show you what those are. And the different drab military colors you can do. I've actually seen these things going down the highway before. They're pretty, uh, they're pretty impressive to see in person. I must say. They seem to be fine on the fuel situation. And it's not a long trip anyway. Oh, okay, Mr. Crown Vic, I'm just watching you there, man. Just hitting them brakes up here. As per usual. I did put a uh, Kenworth W900L back in. Um, so we're going to be doing a moving company run. I think that'll be fun. We'll do that next time. I did a uh, dry run on a stream last week and it turned out pretty darn good. So we're going to do that. Climb this hill here. I'm ready for Idaho, man. You know, Colorado's after that, but I'm definitely ready for Idaho. Ready to see a new state. I have been watching the Colorado project, but honestly, I guess we could try it out. But I'm, you know, obviously want to wait for the SES version because it's going to be amazing when that does happen. No magic, just science. Welcome to Arizona. There we go. Holbrook, Shillo, one mile. It's like every update this game gets, man, it's getting better every single time. All right, we're in Holbrook. We're going through this. We're not stopping here. Look at that sky behind us, man. That is gorgeous. That looks great in the mirror back there. Use our Jake brake slowing down behind this Camaro. Behind the Camaro. So all you guys that love X-Plane, you're going to have a lot of that stuff headed your way for this uh, upcoming month. Sorry, buddy. I was going to let you on the highway, but stopping this thing is not in the cards. Not in the cards at all. It's a really well done mod. I've got to say, I like it a lot. Out up here. Petrified Forest National Park. Oh, so I broke down. I'd get over if I could, man. Sorry. Got to tell that car to screw off. They won't let you over. You got to force your way over. There we go. Apache County. Okay. We'll continue straight then. I have no problems with that. No qualms at all. So yeah, I'm doing uh, the little bar in the uh, one of the front rooms. It just it was a bonus room that is in the house. That was like a library or something. Um, and it just has nothing in there but like the litter box. So I'm gonna move the litter box somewhere else. And I was like, come, don't give me a fun weekend project. Get some things in there. Just it's a pop up bar railings, couple bar stools. And then one of my favorite things that I did get for it was the neon sign in there. And it's a, a St. Pauli's girl neon sign. Uh, it's the closest one I could get to the one that Michael Scott had in the office. We're, if you don't know, we're huge office fans. And uh, that was like a no-brainer when I saw that. And I was really blown away by how cheap uh, neon signs are these days. I used to, you know, they used to be really expensive. I always, you know, thought whenever I was younger, I was like, oh man, one day I'll own a neon sign. It was like 300, 400 bucks. And now you can get them anywhere from 80 to 117, I think, or like between 80 and 100 bucks. Like for, for legitimate ones that are, you know, 
blown glass and have the gas inside of the glass. It's it's pretty incredible how cheap those have come down the line. This is such a beautiful drive, man. That's the thing, you know, we go up to Washington and Oregon and all that. And you always forget just how beautiful these runs are over here in the Southwest. It is my favorite region. Just kidding. Ooh, welcome to New Mexico. Southwest region. You can bypass. Look at that. They're looking out for us today. How about it? You don't know what I'm talking about. That was a D'Angelo uh, reference from the office. Again, office fans. <laughs> All right. can get over around these guys because they are going pretty slow. Oh, we're getting those choppy dop chops. Uh, might be painted truck traffic. It was loading in that truck there and it didn't like it. We'll see. But well, that's the only reason why I haven't used those. Man, this slamming brakes up here. Especially this guy here. What what you doing it for? Dumb dumb. I'm trying to get somebody killed. What's that shift? I'm getting over here, buddy. We need to anyway, because this is our exit. We will. We will. Thank you. I get asked uh, that one too. I'm using the Google navigation voice because the default one just is kind of, I don't know. It doesn't seem very uh, realistic. It's like turn right instead of like, you know, what you're hearing there. All right. Right turn here. I love the indicator bubble. That is so cool. Very unique. All right. We've made it to Gallup, my friends. Let's get around here. Yep, looking good. Let me get over to this side. Got to stay safe here. So we're crossing this huge rail yard. We're going to the rail export. I don't know what this drop's going to be like. It might be hell on earth, but we won't know until we get there because, you know, there's two different prefabs for rail export. I'm hoping that it's not going to be the tough one they're going to throw us in the corner because if that is the case, we're doing it 100% from the outside view. I'm not even going to mess around with these fisheye lenses and getting around that corner. No way, Jose. Sure, we have, a, we have enough room here to swing for our trailer. My God, man. No room at all. Yeah, we're okay back there. Buy it. It's a bit. All right. Right turn here. But yeah, going back to what I was saying about the transmission and, and getting feedback from real truck drivers. One of the rules of thumb whenever you're doing it is uh, you want, you know, 1700. And then when you're downshifting, you want to be below 2000. And that should have you uh, in the zone. In the zone. Remember those things? The zones from Pizza Hut? I haven't had those. I don't think I've had a Pizone in, since they came out, probably. So, and I did see that uh, Pizza Hut, you know, they did their whole rebrand. And I had it since they did it. Um, I was living in St. Louis a few years back. And it wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible pizza. Like, it's not great. That's, that's one of the biggest things is that people, you know are very adamant about their pizza. You're letting me go. I don't know about them though. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're letting, wow. They're all like, Hey, you're a big military truck. Let's be honest. They want me to go so they can get their phone out and get a picture of it. 
I'm getting over this way, car. Do you mind? Thank you very much. Okay, let's get into gear here. This thing is just so much fun to drive. It's badass. Great visibility out of it. It is truly cool. Oh, we got a train coming. All right. Well, we're going to wait for the train, but we're going to swing low. Swing cherry. There we go. From the left. Turn right. All right. Perfect. Got a freight train rolling through here. I don't have the longer train mod in here yet. I need to test that one again. Cause remember that one was really creating issues, but you know what? It's a good thing because I didn't want to sit here for that entire train anyway. So it was a blessing in disguise. I tell you. All good there. All right, we're going to be going right turn here. Uh, yep, the old rail yard. Not sure what to expect here. This is like a hole to do to get back into this place. I'm telling you what. We're not even done yet. We're just now in the industrial area. We go down and around and underneath the highway. That's okay. It's a beautiful day to drive this truck and I'm enjoying it. How about you guys? You enjoying it as well. Look at that Cooper construction. Classic Cooper construction. Oh, we are at the rail yard. It's in front of us. I see. Oh, turn right there. You're right. Sorry. You know what? We're a big military truck. We can just drive right across this spot right here. Not a problem. I see what prefab this is now. You don't have to recalculate anything. I, we got it. Oh, this is the decent rail yard. Thank you. Thank you. It's not the crazy one. That's great news for us, actually. All right, we have made it to our destination. It's just a matter of finding where this thing goes. It does, it does. It's going to be on the left here, probably. Pretty straightforward drop, it looks like. Right there. Between those two trailers. That's going to be interesting, isn't it? Remember, we're really long, so we have to wait for the back ones to go like that so we can set this thing up properly. Looks like they're going to give us room. There we go. There we go. A little bit more that way. Give ourselves some room. We're good. Look at these wheels in action, man. How cool is that? And it turns on a dime. Look at that. That is so cool. All right, just follow it back. We should be okay on the right. Yep, we're good. Drop these little Humvees off where they need to go. Keep walking that low boy back. This is a pretty good approach here. Pretty pleased with that. Could have turned it a little harder, but that's all right. We're, we're going to be okay here in a second. I'll just get that going that way. There we go. 
Those mirrors are pretty much useless. Let's be perfectly clear there. All right, once I get that one on that line, I'm going to go ahead and straighten this whole rig out. There we go. This thing is literally a tank. They shouldn't be happy with that. If we just go straight back, we should be all right. Okay, back there. Yep, they're happy with it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, let's go ahead and detach this thing. See what we got here. What do we get? We got an excellent 224 miles, five hours, 15 minutes, 30.8 gallons of fuel consumed. How about it? We're gonna go check out what options we have for this truck and then I'll show you my mods. All right, these are the options you have. You only have one cabin. You've got uh, one chassis. And then here's the engine. It's a GMC 6004 16 V71 Valentine tank engine, putting out 800 horsepower. Your other options are the cat, uh, but I think that's the one that they wanted you to have. So I went with that one and it sounds awesome. For the transmission, you got a ZF Traxxon 16 plus two gear. Uh, it is an 18 speed with a retarder. Look at those ratios. That's probably why it sounded so crazy. Uh, the interior, just the stock interior you have. And then these are the other colors you have. Um, I do like the drab green, man. That looks pretty darn cool. Very, uh, very military and uh, army like. And then here are your options. Not a whole lot here to do. Um, you have the SISL stuff that I have installed. Um, and then that's pretty much it. You can put radiance on top if you'd like. It's just one single uh, little beacon there if you want it. The other ones that you can do are just the tire options. You have uh, all these. You've got off-road one two, three, four is the ones we're using today. We got five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine. This, look at that. That's like straight for Antarctica uh, for off-road nine. Um, put it back to four. And then you have options here. Um, no front rim if you'd like. So steel or no front rim. I went with steel on mine. I don't know which one you would want. Probably no front rim um, if you wanted to be 100% uh, with it. But... That's what we got there. And then that is pretty much it. Like I said, you don't have a lot of options. And then on the interior, uh, you can put uh, your navigator in there if you'd like. Uh, and then you can put a CB radio in here um, as well. Again, these are SISL mods. Um, if you wanted to have that, you could. Um, and then that is pretty much it when it comes to the truck. And having a look at our mods here at the very top, I got my Oshkosh Defense HEMTTA4. And uh, I have that moving van that we we're going to be using soon enough. There's that W900L, uh, the Western Star we drove. There's the Municipal Police Traffic Pack, uh, the Mac RD. Um, we've got the real US new, uh, Google Nav. That's the one I used there. Uh, 137 Combined Engines Pack, International Work Star. Uh, current Events, that's what does those little uh, messages you see on the message boards. DP's Realistic Traffic is the one I use. Um, and then the Military Cargo Pack we use today by Jazzy Cat. Uh, painted Truck Traffic as well. And then I have all my uh, Master Packs for um, various ownable trailers. Uh, moving down the line, I got my key and all of my stuff here for the John Ruta stuff. Same thing for the Highway Killer. Uh, my graphics is always uh, the Realistic Graphics mod uh, by FRKN64. Absolutely love it. Icons is the one I use. It's on the Steam Workshop. That's how I get rid of uh, the floating stuff. Uh, no boundaries mod. Oversize load placard and sign. SISL's Mega Pack. That's the one I use. Another Steam uh, Workshop mod there. Uh, then I have the SCS 53 foot trailer skin pack if I want that for the ownables. Uh, and then the real tires mod and the real tires mod. The other one is the trailer's edition. But that's all I got in there. And if I ever want to run the coast to coast map, um, I could throw that in there and then just throw it at the very, very bottom is what I do. Um, I need to test to see what FOV mod I want to, or if any are working right now. Last I checked, I don't think any of them are really working. So that's why I wasn't really worried about that. But yeah, if I went to coast to coast, I would just literally activate it and throw the priority of it all the way down at the very bottom um, if I wanted to use it. But uh, we're not going to use it, obviously. That is all the mods I have, folks. That's going to do it for this episode of America Truck Simulator. Take care of yourselves and each other.